What is up? Today I am coming at you from the car because I finally mapped out a route that is not in our usual area so I feel comfortable actually showing you my run. The dream would be to have Jeff on a bike trailing me but I don't even know what type of bike would be safe to ride in the winter on the ice on the snow. If you know, definitely let us know in the comment section down below but the plan for today is to run seven miles easy. I'm not sure if I will get all of that as I've never run this trail before. I don't know how well it will be marked, what the conditions will be like. I literally just went on all trails, put in my distance I wanted, put in like out and back routes, something like that. And now we're here, but I'm going to take Riker to get a head start. Jeff is going to follow a little bit behind me with Murphy. If you're wondering why Mr. Murphy has to wear his little car snooter cover, I don't know what we want to call this. He gets very excited in the car. He loves the car, but he gets a little bit too excited that he has to yell the entire time that we're in the car. I know, buddy, but this doesn't hurt him. He can breathe fine. He's just excited. Okay, so I am mostly already dressed for my run. I'm just gonna switch off this insulated jacket for my shell, which honestly, when I'm getting dressed, I feel like will never be enough. But as soon as I get moving, I'm hot. I know it looks like I wear the same thing every run. I kinda do, but I'ma let you in on a little secret. If you find a jacket that works, you don't need more than one. Got our vest that is already filled up with water. Now the real decision is which shoes we wanna wear today. Remember a few videos back when I told you I bought a beautiful new pair of shoes? Yes, these were those beautiful shoes that I planned to keep inside. They were stunning, they were bright, they were green. As you can see, they're now brown. But I have been wearing these when the roads have been plowed and there's not a ton of ice. Um, so I'm not sure if I wanna do those today or if I wanna do the screw shoes. I am leaning towards these since we'll be on trails. It's literally snowing right now and it's probably icy out there. Fair warning, this is gonna be some shaky footage. As much as my run form has improved, running is not smooth. Things I'm excited about today though are trying the screw shoes and easy run day. Technically, most of my runs are supposed to be easy effort days since I've been increasing mileage lately, but I have trouble staying at an easy pace, especially when I'm outside especially when it's cold. So I find it helpful to do my first mile or two fast, warm my body up, then ease up on pace and intentionally slow down to take videos or pictures as a way to keep my effort easy. Part of what I love about running is that it allows me to explore, connect with nature. It becomes almost like a moving meditation. And so having these little moments of recording or taking pictures is a nice reminder to keep my mind in the moment and let my body do the rest. Also, seriously, if you know of a good bike that Jeff could ride in the winter, beside me. I've found the trails. I've done the research. We just need the bike. So let me know if you have any suggestions and we'll save up so we can improve this footage for you. What is up? So I just got back in the car for my run. I am frozen right now. There is the cutest oh. bulldog. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow, that's a <laughs> There's puppy. a bulldog puppy crossing right in front of us right now, but I am trying to warm up my hands. I think we are going to go out to do a little bit of hiking, but right now I am snacking on a Built Bar cookies and cream bar. Come on, can we focus today? Today, we're having the cookies and cream Built Bar. I still don't know if that focused, but we are having a Built Bar because I have been loving Built Bar lately. Okay, these are one of the few protein bars that don't immediately bloat me or give me an upset stomach after eating them, which makes them awesome for pre, in, or post run. I haven't actually tried them on a run yet. Maybe that'll be the next experiment, but I've been loving these and I actually feel like I've had to amend my top flavor rankings. Last video, I told you that coconut was in the number one spot. I love the coconut flavor. I love the coconut almond flavor. I love the chocolate orange, orange chocolate, whatever it's called. This is number four for me, the cookies and cream. Very, very good. And then this past week, Jeff and I tried German chocolate cake, which is like chocolatey and chewy and decadent and delicious and like everything you'd want out of a chocolate flavor. I was also in my period, okay, so. I feel like that's a good gauge on flavor. So I'm super excited to be partnering with Bell Bar for this video. I will put a link in the description box down below to save you 20% off your next order. They have over 18 different flavors. They're all coated in real chocolate. The flavors are great. The texture is great. The taste is great. The macros, I can't say enough good things about these, okay? If you track macros, if you track calories, those are also great. It's just a lot of greatness in a bar. I just watched that footage back. I look like a dork. Jeff says I look cute, but I look cute in the way that a horse girl looks cute. He didn't add that second bit. That was all me. I just feel like the headband, the hat, the like colorful things combo, it 
Anyways, we decided against a hike today because as soon as I got back in the car, I really did get back in the car with every intention of getting out of the car and going on a hike. But once I sat in that seat, it was so warm, it was so cozy, and I just wanted to stay put. Luckily, Mr. Murphy did still get his hike in with Jeff while Riker and I were out, so he is a happy boy. And now it's time to take you through our post-run recovery routine, which starts with Carbs, okay, in the car we got a little bit of protein from the Built Bar, I'm not sure if this is focusing, I don't know, but this is the concoction I showed you in the last video that I know looks weird, doesn't look appetizing, doesn't look like the choice of carbs. But let me tell you, don't knock it till you try it. This is sticky rice, molasses, honey, salt, cinnamon, and coconut milk. I just go on autopilot making this now. It is what my body craves. It is so dense with carbs and it's just, it hits the spot. You know, you kind of have like those comfort foods that are part of your routine that maybe isn't the tastiest thing you could eat, but you look forward to it as part of your routine. This is that for me and I love it. Okay, so I do have a mobility flow I'm gonna take you through today. Think of it kind of like yoga, but flowier, combining some less yoga-y movements with more yoga-y movements. I don't know, that's how I'm gonna describe it for now. We'll get into that in a sec. But I wanna be clear that recovery is not just doing a quick stretch or foam rolling or stretching. Recovery is the entire process that occurs from the moment you stop training to the moment you start training again, right? So it's not just the way you move, it's how you eat, it's how you sleep, it's how you manage stress, etc. So even if you were to like, let's say, stretch for an hour every day, but you're not eating enough, you're not going to make progress as effectively as possible. Optimizing your performance and optimizing your progress comes down to working smarter, not harder, which is a lesson I learned the hard way. Because when I started running, I was super gung-ho. I wanted to run super fast, super far all the time. I wanted to run every day, like just get better quickly, right? Because like it felt good to run and it felt good to be good at it. That will not help you. There are certain things where having more willpower can kind of get you ahead. Like I hate to bring it up because it's not the best example, but like with dieting, if you have a lot of willpower, there are some people who can handle more strict diets a little bit longer without falling off track or without having it affect their psyche too much, right? Bad example, but willpower can kind of get you a little bit ahead, right? Whereas with something like running or more performance-based sports where recovery is a huge component, that willpower is just gonna get you injured. It's almost like being too motivated works against you, which sucks because I wish my body would just get on the same page. I'm like, hello, I'm here, I'm showing up, I'm motivated, let's be really fast now, but takes the body a little bit longer to get the memo and you know get on board with that. So learn from my mistakes, do not injure yourself. I know that what I'm about to share, this mobility flow is just part of a well-balanced recovery routine. I'm also prioritizing good food, good sleep, good stress management, as good as I can, um, as well as stability training to keep my joints healthy and happy, which if you'd like to see that in a future video, comment down below. Otherwise, let's get some mobility flow. Okay, so mobility flow. This is a flow I shared to the Team Plans channel a while back, so if you want to follow along with me, I'll put a link in the description box down below, but what you can expect from this flow is a lot of hips, hamstrings, adductors, and ankles for your running stride, a lot of shoulders, spine, and lats because arm swing is important while running, and a few smaller movements for the hands and wrists just cause. Whether you run or not, it's still a great mobility flow, so feel free to give it a go, but the reason I do these is because every stride you take and every rep you make impacts your joints and the muscles that support them. Little imbalances or inefficiencies in form can add up to tightness that amplifies those issues over time, which is why even though this might not feel like an intense workout or even a workout at all, setting aside time to do this will help you stay injury free so you can keep bringing the intensity to the workouts that count. While I'm lucky enough to have never experienced any serious injuries from running, when I first started, I made the mistake of running too far too fast and struggled with pretty much every sort of running pain, shin splints, IT band issues, patella femoral or kneecap pain, all of it. Now, while some of these issues came from training too much and resting too little, I was also struggling with muscle imbalances. I was working with a chiropractor at the time and the main issue, at least with my knee pain, seemed to be that my inner thigh adductor muscles were very tight, pulling the knee inward and putting it at a greater risk of injury on every stride. Long story short, mobility matters, stretching might be boring, yoga might not be for you, but finding a way to bring mobility into your routine is definitely worth it to stay injury free. All right, that is it for that flow for this video. We throw up peace signs and we don't know what to do. Um, 
I will link the full follow along version of this mobility flow in the description box down below, as well as the link to save 20% off your built bar order. And I know I've been bugging you about it. Okay, but one more reminder, if you're a winter biker, if you know what bikes work well in the winter, you have suggestions, you have ideas, let me know. We've looked into some fat tire bikes. Um, they're really expensive, uh, so that's one thing. But let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.